Hello everyone, I'm Aydoğan Vatandaş. Today I'm going to talk to uh, Mr. Abdul Melik Alkan about the recent developments in Kyrgyzstan. So Mr. Abdul Melik Alkan, can you please tell us about the recent developments in Kyrgyzstan? What happened? Um, according to a couple of sources that um, at Turkish, actually he is the Kyrgyz, hold the citizenship of the Kyrgyzstan. He was abducted by unknown people, which is uh, it revealed that it's going to be the Turkish intelligence working. Maybe uh, still we need to confirm the sources, but he was abducted uh, in front of his um, car. Actually, he was running to his car at 9 p.m. and he found that his tire is flat. And then, um, then they round him up and put him in an unknown car and uh, take him to the airport. This is the source that we know. The students run to today to run to the um, embassy, Turkish embassy to protest and want their uh, educator, the teacher back. Now, uh, Orhan Inandi has been there in the 1990s. He's been like 25 years. He's one of educators and praised by many officials, uh, presidents, opened the schools and then there's uh, schools under the Seba company. So he's been working there and uh, now this is uh, this is what the Turkey does uh, recently. And he, do, he did it in Moldova. He did it after uh, the coup attempt in 2016. You know, um, Turkey blamed the Gulen movement, uh, one of the masterminding orchestrating the coup attempt, which is Gulen himself and then His affiliated followers denied many times internationally and nationally. So now Turkey um, accuses him, uh, but um, Turkey abducting educators, teachers. I and mean, he recently did it in Kenya, one of the nephew of the Gulen. He has not been involved with any uh, offensive activities. But his last name is Gulen, so they thought that it will buy mm -hmm you know, the public. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, and it did in Moldova, six teachers, 2000, after 2018, um, were abducted from their houses, in front of their houses, in front of their families, and they taken to the Turkey, but the European Union uh, fined Moldova, uh, Moldovan intelligence services who were involved in this um, disappearance, this forced disappearance, abductions. Now, this all um, defined that the Turkey transnational repression that Turkey carry out to outside, mm -hmm. to abducting the people, the innocent, the people they have never been in Turkey during the coup attempt. But mm -hmm. what Turkey does, and it's been reported now, Turkey is violating the, the international law. Turkey is a member signatory state of those law disappearance under the OCC and also under the Human, human Rights uh, Council, Human Rights uh, Court and the European Union because it has like a 19 articles about the forced disappearance. And Turkey himself is a member of the human trafficking under the UN. Turkey recently, uh, several 2002-2013, signed an agreement, bilateral agreement with a couple of countries about the human trafficking and Kyrgyzstan in one of them. So the basically Turkey, but I, I would like to underline that Turkey, there is no uh, disappear forced disappearance. This is not my topic, this is not my expertise. I think uh, it's, it's, it's better to talk as uh, international mm -hmm. law, lawyer or international yeah. law. What do you think about the uh, reactions from Kyrgyzstan government because their sovereignty is being violated in that case? <clears throat> so how do they react to it? That's that's very good questions. Actually, under the UN, in internationally, in this political science, every state is sovereign, is fully integrated, sovereign and integrated, territory integrated. So every state should respect to uh, the sovereignty. But what we understand that Turkey is not respecting the sovereignty of A state or B state because Turkey is going to there or maybe they were there under the embassies. Uh, you know, they are called like a first secretary or second secretary. So their intelligences, they're looking forward to people who are opposite to Turkey. 
and I think that's going to be a huge backlash from the the Kyrgyz community uh, because they are known uh, and the people you know they educated a lot of students and their alumni they're um, they are decent and very uh, educated people I, I see the protesting they said okay leave it our teacher he has been here peacefully he has been helping us and he's a citizen of, uh, of the Kyrgyzstan. So I really don't know, uh, but if uh, the, going back to your question, it's going to, uh, with the drawback uh, to the Turkey, I mean, the people are going to get the sense that Turkey came to here, uh, abducted one of the best teacher, educator, and now what? what is it? So the Kyrgyzstan, is, we can understand that it's not that powerful state, but Turkey, that's why Turkey is working with the people to, um, to, to maybe buy them. I'm not blaming the Kyrgyzstan. Right. Okay. But that's going to be a reaction. Do you think, my last question is that do you think that it might be related to uh, to Sedat Pekar case who is in uh, United Arab Emirates right now and he is uh, revealing a lot of secrets of the Turkish mm -hmm. government, especially the secrets of Erdogan. Do you think that they are doing it to uh, to make him uh, scared of of, of course, government. I mean there would be nonsense to not to connect those issues because I think I have I have a two level of analysis here. One is uh, going the Sedat Packer is revealing all dirty businesses that he has done under the the government, the Erdogan government. Now one thing is that they are threatening him as an intimidation, transnational intimidation to him. That look, we are we can bring people who we don't like from everywhere, no matter who are they, no matter what they are doing, and even violating international law. Now later, this international law will be highly cited, and it is I think is a new terminology: transnational repression, transnational ab abduction. So you think that your hand, your arm can reach wherever you want? You can bring the people to the court. Interestingly, I'm going to take you back to the disappearance, forced disappearance under the Turkish law. There is no such a law to protect the people who were forced, uh, forced disappearance before before you. Uh, I checked out. So there is no criminal law. But what Turkey say, said, those people, they are involved in the criminal law, okay, in, in the cr crime, and they have to be trialed by the criminal law but those people were not in the crime they are not mm -hmm. even in the country before during the uh, coup attempt but mm -hmm. this is um the second one is that they are this is very typical runaway of uh of turkey turkish politics under erdogan whenever he hit back whenever he hit hit hard he is covering what the some petty, unimportant, not matter to the public, but what he is doing uh, to threaten to the Sadat Pekir that he wanted to say, okay, I can bring you. So look, I am bringing people from Kenya. I'm bringing people from the, the Kyrgyzstan. I had done it before. Okay. Now you should, I will, I can bring you too. The second one is to now, the Sadat Pekir is watched by millions of people and it became the, the word of the mouth and it related to the Erdogan regime. So it's a little bit maybe what the economic spiral down, downward and the other so so social issues mm -hmm. to cover it a little bit with those, you know, uh, the news. Now, what they are going to do, the media close to the Erdogan going to brag about, see, we brought very important educator, very important member of the uh, Gulen movement mm -hmm. affiliated to Turkey. No, this is what we do and we are the strong country and that violating with international law. Mm -hmm. And I think there will be a huge consequences, grave consequences for Turkey into international arena and people start writing and speaking mm -hmm. about it. Thank you. Thank you so much, Abdul Melik. Thank, Thank you. Thank you for your uh, information. Thank you so much. Thank you. Have a great day.